Now, one thing Michelle has been open about struggling with during this journey was something not related to WLC per se, but was about being alone during the pandemic. And we know she's not the only one. So Carlin is here now with ways to protect your mental health while living alone and feeling isolated during this extended period of isolation. Hey, Car, so many people dealing with this. Yes, it's, it's, it's an epidemic within a pandemic. And, you know, even before this year, research shows that, you know, loneliness is an epidemic. So I can't imagine how it feels for those who are living in alone who have to deal with emergencies on their own, not being able to have someone that they can lean on or they can, you know, just reach out to. Because, again, we're in the middle of a health pandemic. So even the regular things that we would have done living alone that could have help or pacified, you know, with the feelings, we can't rely on it. And the biggest part is the loneliness also impacts our brain and our ability for us to navigate day to day with ease. What I've noticed myself is that all those little interactions you have in a day, talking to the person at the coffee shop, talking to people at the dog park, even paying your fare on the um, public transportation, having that exchange with the driver, all of that has dropped off. And I think that that has also um, yeah. had a very chilling effect on how we are just human to human out in the world. So let's talk about the brain. What are some ways that research has shown loneliness can affect the brain? To, to make it simple, I liken it to water, right? Mm -hmm. Our body tells us when we're thirsty, right? We get that little notification that tells us, hey, Tracy, you're thirsty, get a grab of water. Mm -hmm. Because we have such a you know, stigma around loneliness, when we do, when the brain sends us that notification, for a lot of us, we think that there's something wrong with us, so we don't acknowledge it. We don't say it. We talk about everything else, but we don't talk about loneliness. So the impact, the mental impact, the impact on our brain, when we do deny that innate need, because as humans, we are wired for connection, we are social mammals. So when we deny that innate need, essentially we're adding more stress to our lives, which will have a negative impact on our brain and our overall well-being. So, Car, you say uh, your first tip is to manage the overwhelmed feelings in the moment. And what do you mean by that? So what I often guide people to do is to, if I can win this moment, then it means that more likely I'm able to win the day, the week, the month, et cetera, et cetera. So I use this acronym called BEEP. And BEEP stands for, each letter stands for something. So B, using your breath. When you feel that anxiety or wherever that emotional data comes up, it might be in your chest, in your throat, in your jaw, breathe your way through it. Use breath as an anchor it's for us to disengage from the automatic thoughts and stories that your mind will tell you during the moment. E stands for expand, allow the emotions to ride through. A lot of us end up trying to get rid of the discomfort. So we don't know what we truly feel in the moment. If we allow the emotion to expand, an emotion takes about 60 to second, you know, 90 wave. If we allow that to happen, we'll get more ideas and more information and more clarity on what our next step can look like, which leads me to the next E, which is about expressing. How do I express that healthy emotion? Again, if you're feeling that loneliness, there's nothing wrong with you. It means that you're human. How do I express it? Looking for different ways to express that emotion, to get it out there, to give it a voice, to give it an avenue, to give it an outlet is actually quite healthy and it helps us to deal with the mental load and the overwhelm. And P stands for positioning your posture for, for practice. And by that, I mean, are you choosing the right next step for you in this moment? So, for example, if dealing with loneliness, the first thing that you would do is pick up the phone and call a friend. But if you're feeling that bout of loneliness in the middle of the night, then what do you do? What's in your container to help you to navigate through? Being patient and giving ourselves permission to explore and to find the right things is a huge part of managing the mental overload. Really good rundown there. I, I know you've got some actionable steps that we can take if we find ourselves in this situation. What do you suggest? I suggest starting with, uh, you know, defining your loneliness persona. You know, sometimes when we don't create, you know, give ourselves permission for us to acknowledge the loneliness, to say that we're feeling lonely, to identify what parts of the day am I feeling the loneliest, the brain will just take all that emotional data the brain is now your driver and you're not because you're not beeping your way through it. And now it becomes your identity. 
And when we identify with the emotions, especially the unpleasant emotions, whether it's fear, guilt, or shame, that takes us down a higher anxiety road, which can lead to chronic loneliness. So again, going through and navigating through the stigma of talking about loneliness, acknowledging that we feel lonely is the first step. And the second one I would say is, you know, theme your days. I, I know it's hard. We can't go out and see our friends, but if you're living alone, can you theme your days? You know, Mondays, Mondays can be, you know, um, magic Mondays where you're living yourself open for new possibilities. Tuesdays, maybe color code your day, but really creating a ritual and creating a routine can really help to navigate with a little bit more ease. The third thing I would share is do daily brain dumps, right? When we keep the conversation in our head, when the brain starts with automaticity, which is the brain is designed to automatically create those little stories about why we feel the way we feel. And if there is a shame stigma around loneliness, then internally we take that shame and we put it on ourselves and we now define ourselves through those lines. Mm -hmm. But if you give that emotion an outlet and, 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 you, and you do daily brain dump, but that can look like singing, that can look like coloring, that can look like journaling, that, it can look like different things. It can look like connecting with others who are living alone as well and sharing ideas on what's working for you and what's not. That's also a possibility to help keep you going. And the last thing is, as Michelle shared, is to be your biggest cheerleader, right? Cheer yourself on. And the days that, you know, you really, you, you did the best you could with that moment, even if it does not look like what it looked like before, celebrate that. Give yourself permission to continue building through and navigating through. And remember, you're not alone. So continue to reach out to others as well and share what you're doing, share the struggle, share what's working, share what's not. Because in the spirit of community, you will also find some human connection as well. I love those tips, and I love this idea of, uh, you mentioned, sort of setting three manageable goals per day. I know that would work with my kind of personality, and as you say, we're all very individual, but sometimes it's that action, that putting one foot in front of the other, yes. that pulls you out of those moments of loneliness and despair. Thank you, Carr. Really useful tips and ideas there.